Hi, welcome to our daily encounter. Today we are going to be reading about, in our daily reading, the Israelites approaching Mount Sinai. And this is a very frightful occasion. Uh, the Israelites see the glory of God. They see the power of God. And they see God in, in His glory and in His majesty. And, and it, it is a very fearful uh, event. Uh, I'd like to just read a few verses from it. And while I read it, just kind of picture yourself there at the foot of the mountain. This is coming from uh, Exodus 19, uh, starting in verse 16. So it came about on the third day when it was morning that there were thunder and lightning flashes and a thick cloud upon the mountain and a very loud trumpet sound uh, so that all the people who were in the camp trembled. And Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Now Mount Sinai was all in smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And its smoke ascended like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain quaked violently. A very, very unnerving situation. You're looking up, and you see this fire descending on the mountain, and you see this smoke like a furnace, and the whole mountain is just quaking like an earthquake. And you can just imagine the fear in the people's hearts. I mean, just think for yourself. Think of a time when maybe you got caught in a lightning storm or a thunderstorm and, and there was lightning and thunder, high winds, maybe hail and, and that's a very very scary situation. Um, I've actually experienced that myself and uh, I tell you it, it was very unnerving but think about experiencing those things and, and not just thinking of them as some natural occurrence but knowing that it is the God, the creator of the whole universe who is expressing and manifesting His holy presence to the people. And they know that this is God behind all of these things. It must have been terrifying for them. And so this is the picture that they get of God. Uh, this, is, this is how they see God as this all-consuming fire. Definitely a God you don't want to mess with. But it was through this that... Uh, they received a revelation of God and they received the law of God there on Mount Sinai, uh, which becomes important. Now, Mount Sinai, uh, in and of itself, is a significant event. As a matter of fact, uh, for the Jewish people, this was a historical event, a major historical event in their history. But when we compare it to something else, it even becomes even more glorious and it becomes even more important for us. That is when we compare it to Mount Calvary. Uh, this, this beautiful picture arises when we compare Mount Sinai with Mount Calvary. Uh, by Mount Calvary, uh, what I mean is the place in which Jesus Christ was crucified. It is often called Mount Calvary. And when you compare these two, it's, it, it's amazing how polar opposite they are, but yet how they work together to bring us the gospel message. When we think about Mount Sinai, we think about the power of God. We think about God in His judgment, in His wrath, in His fury, as He's uh, appearing as that consuming fire and the smoke is coming up like a furnace. Uh, that's the picture that we get of God. But when you contrast that to Mount Calvary, we also see God this time manifested in human flesh, uh, in weakened human flesh, beaten, spat upon, torn, pierced, hanging on a tree, with blood dripping down. A, a picture of what would appear, if you didn't know better, to be defeat. Uh, and he's hanging there in a weakened state to the point that he even draws his last breath, and he partakes of death there. Uh, that's a total contrast of, what, of the God that we see in Mount Sinai. On Mount Sinai, we see a God of judgment, of fury, of wrath. And on Mount Calvary, we see a God of mercy and love and grace. But it's all the same God. And both pictures are very necessary for us to get the full 
the full message of the gospel. On Mount Sinai, not only did you see that, that fearful sight of God, but also the law was giving as, given as well. Uh, in chapter 20 of Exodus, you see the Ten Commandments. And then uh, chapter 21, uh, some commandments on how to treat one another. And, and it goes on from there. But uh, you have the law and you have God uh, in His fury. And, and that becomes a very important picture. You know, a lot of times we might think, well, I only want to think about Calvary. I only want to think about God's love, His grace, His mercy. Um, and so whenever I want to... Uh, increase my love for God, uh, I always go to Mount Calvary. But what I'd suggest to you today is that Mount Sinai is just as important. You see, it's not until we can fully comprehend the power of God, the majesty of God, the all-consuming fire part of God, the part of God whose wrath is against all sinners, that God is a God more powerful than anything we can ever imagine, the most powerful being in all creation, that if we just got a glimpse of him, uh, we would just pass out out of fear. Uh, until we get a picture of God as he, as he is in all of his power and glory, we can't really truly appreciate God manifested in flesh on a cross. Because the more we understand and apprehend how great God is and how powerful He is, that we can truly appreciate the fact that He doesn't dish out His wrath on us, but rather He extends His love to us. And so it's almost as though the more we, we understand Mount Sinai, the more we appreciate Mount, Mount Calvary. Also on Mount Sinai, as I mentioned, was the law. And the law uh, let's see, okay, first let's say uh, Mount Sinai represented uh, some things about God and His power and His glory. But the law, what it did when it was brought to Moses on Mount Sinai, was show some things about man. It showed man's inability to meet God's standard. Uh, some 600 plus laws handed down to the Jewish nation. And all of its holiness and all of its uh, righteous nature... And, and when we look at ourselves and we see how far we fall short of that high standard, it humbles us. And it makes us say, hey, maybe I can't approach this holy God on my own. And so that combination of seeing God in His power, seeing His law and its righteousness and our inability to keep that law, when we, when, we, when we really comprehend that and soak it in, when we look at Calvary, it becomes so much more precious, so much more sweet. Because we see ourselves reconciled to God, brought back to God in a relationship with Him through the cross, and then a righteousness assigned to us that we could never achieve through the keeping of the law. And so the, the cross in Calvary becomes so much sweeter uh, once we pass through Mount Sinai. So as we read about Mount Sinai, let's not just pass it off as, well, that's just something that happened in history. We don't really need to concern ourselves about it. It really has a lot to do with the gospel message. When we sin against God, we are under the wrath of God. But when we turn to Calvary, that wrath is taken away. We are reconciled to God, brought into a loving relationship with Him, and can spend eternal life with Him. And, and, and we never want to take away from any aspect of that beautiful story. So with that, guys, I, I hope these are just some good things that we can meditate on today. Maybe help put some things in perspective. I do appreciate you guys watching the video. Hope you guys have a great day. Love you guys. God bless.